Metallic Rouge. That's just something I like. With Metallic Rouge, the first two episodes had me interested, but with episodes three and four, I had me hooked. But as always, let's, before we get into anything, ladies and gentlemen, let's at least talk about the story first. With the story first starting off with two characters, one by the name of Rouge and the other one by the name of Sarah. Now, Sarah is like a famous singer, and Sarah basically sees Rouge in the streets, and she sort of picks her up and sort of takes her on their wing in a certain way. In the midst of this time frame, Rouge is also talking to this bird for some reason by being controlled by none other than my wife, Naomi. And Sarah is seemingly getting followed by this red mecha... Mega Man Zero looking S character. But that's all I say for the story for now. I definitely wanna just get into why I'm sort of really liking the show at this moment in time. Let me first get into two of the smaller fish in the pond before we get to the bigger one. So the first thing I wanna talk about is one, the fucking music, right? The music actually had me in a bit of a chokehold ever since episode one, where we see Sarah just sort of singing her heart out to everyone that's in the club right now. Or even some of the themes that I do hear that's in, I believe, episode four. And honestly, I cannot wait for this show to be over so I can get some of these OSTs for my videos. Yo, if you have any of the links for any of these OSTs at all, please send them my way, Warner Brother. <laughs> Another huge positive I wanna go over is the animation, right? So the animation sort of reminded me in a sense of like, how it was basically just like regular regular stuff where sometimes you have like a little, little bit of like cool stuff happening here and there and then you just out of nowhere boom you just get this cool ass fight scene with this beautiful ass animation sort of reminiscent of like free run when free run you just had like you saw like cool animation here and there and then you just get a random ass fight scene that was in that season or i think in the middle of the season and it looks fucking phenomenal and i am liking the cgi too for this show as well i think the cgi does fit pretty well in the show it doesn't it doesn't look distracting or weird it looks like it actually just fits in pretty well with what's going on but time to get into think of it the big fish of this show right i think is the subject matter so far and in episode 34 that's the most interested i've been in the show that's when they had me completely hooked and by the way i'm i ain't gonna spoil a bit of it so if anything there's only four episodes out right now so definitely go ahead and watch it but here we go so what am i alluding to is the thing with the needs right now the needs i well, i'm pretty sure it's called needs am i getting it correctly it's because i know it's not fucking neon uh, it's definitely needs definitely needs so with the needs they were a group of people that were made by humans so basically artificial humans that come in sort of all different shapes and sizes either young or old they have really darker skin or they have really lighter skin to almost albino and the three distinctions they have from humans which is weird enough is one the tattoos two they need nectar to literally survive because without nectar they literally die and three they have a genetic code inside of them that tells them to not harm humans but besides that they're literally equivalent to humans themselves now anyone with eyes can see how problematic and insanely crazy things can get with needs and humans coexisting in one place and sort of them not being equal to the other right but the reason i really like it right is because of the way that they go about it like it's sort of shown to you in episode one and it's almost like a bit of a runny theme all the way till we get to episode four at least that's what's out right now i don't know if they'll do more which i hope they do more because they're doing a pretty good job with it so far but it starts out with one of the needs that needs a nectar right and his nectar gets stolen from him and he can't find it so when he can't find it, he eventually goes out and dies. And just from this action, it just sets up basically how this is gonna go about, right? With one, the needs and their need for nectar. Two, that need, that people actually will steal the nectar from these needs and even if they're right in front of them begging for like them to save them if they have their own nectar they don't care they literally will let them die reason being because this nectar to humans is basically like drugs it's like cocaine crack and it basically just like gives you a very good time or very good place of where you're at right now with it being very sad and also really hard to watch oh yeah sign i almost forgot why to say why the needs were created the needs were created because they were a stopping measure to help fight out these bad aliens that were attacking humans at a certain point in time and after this war was done and over with, the needs are still there, still existing. So they made them do more harder labor, more harder jobs that realistically humans can't necessarily do, as well as do other jobs that necessarily not, no one else would really want to do. Almost making it feel like, that just sounds like slavery with extra steps. Especially when you combine that with them being in camps, as well as them being treated very poorly in those camps as well, with not having a lot of medical attention here and there. And lastly, I want to go over, which is basically just the overarching story, which is what is freedom at least at this point at least what i'm what i'm seeing from episode one to four and especially when it gets sort of reinstated in episode three and four with rouge right and rouge is basically trying to 
feel what is freedom am i being free right now is this really out of my own free will this is what i truly want to do and it becomes more or less a more interesting watch when other people question her and on her actions and how she's doing things and she just like sort of almost comes out either with a blank slate or a visceral reaction of like I, I don't know like am I doing the right thing do I have to do something else in life to be better making it feel like almost like an awakening to a certain degree you know what one more thing I want to talk about is the doctor now I don't necessarily I forgot his name but they could keep calling him the doctor anyway so I definitely want to talk about him for like at least a second or two right to me the doctor feels like a broken toy he feels like a toy that's been broken and you just can't really put it back together or at least back together the same way what it feels like with the doctor his mentality is completely screwed and fucked to a certain degree he doesn't necessarily believe that lean should really have any more of the rights even though he's a lean himself but he believes that humans and needs are basically the same thing and realistically they're just gonna keep asking for more and being more greedy to a certain degree making it really feel like he doesn't really care right in a sense of not caring about himself or maybe even others to so much to the point of like just self-indestructing even if it takes like everyone else with him. having just a really cold heart from the way he sees the world and and just not really giving a shit about anything or anyone around him but it definitely super highly suggests metallic rouge right now i think it's pretty fire right now for the first four episodes and i'm definitely gonna come back when I, we at least like pretty much finish the season i'll come back afterwards but other than that thank you guys for watching like it comment subscribing see you guys in the next one peace